I think there's a little bit of an artist in everybody, that's for sure. It's a reflection of our culture, the representation of, of the people and, and the time and what's happening during that time. I think that the arts are all about sort of feeding that desire to be more than you might think you can be. If you take away music and dance and exhibitions and uh, uh, creative expression, you, you take away w what makes us human. And so much of what we know about our cultural history and everything has always been determined by a culture's artists. It's important that what is specific to Manitoba, uh, you know, can blossom and the Manitoba Arts Council develops that to a great extent. Societies that have had vibrant artistic communities are the same societies that have excelled. Art is at the center of healthy communities, a vibrant creative economy, a productive education system, and a province connected to a global environment. And since 1965, the Manitoba Arts Council, or MAC, has been working to ensure that Manitoba remains a center of artistic excellence. In its first year of distributing grants, the Council emphasized existing cultural organizations, providing operational funds to the Royal Winnipeg Ballet, Le Cirque Molière de Saint Boniface, Manitoba Theatre Centre, the Winnipeg Art Gallery, and Rainbow Stage. These original five organizations were the foundation of Manitoba's arts and cultural identity. I think if you want to make it as an artist, you've got to know within yourself right from the start. As the arts community in Manitoba began to grow, so did Mac's range of support to the arts. Each of Manitoba's established arts organizations housed extremely talented artists who would benefit from individual grants that might help launch struggling artists into a professional solo career. One of the things that the Manitoba Arts Council does in providing funding both to organizations, but I think to in, uh, particularly to individual artists, is that um, it allows artists to experiment with the art form and to, whether it's in film or literature or the visual arts or, or music, to experiment with the art form to push boundaries. Recognizing that potential, Mac began funding individual artists in 1973. Wanda Koop was one of the first visual artists to receive an individual arts grant. When I received this uh, grant, it was uh, the heavens opened. It gave me the opportunity to uh, uh, commit to a period of, of intensive work. And um, I never really looked back. It was an opportunity to actually be able to do my job, to actually do my job to the fullest of my abilities. Early on in a, in a performer's career, when you're just getting started and uh, trying to find opportunities to play here and there, it's difficult and it's expensive. And uh, it's the sort of thing that, with all the support my family gave me, uh, we wouldn't have been able to make this happen on our own. And uh, I'm extremely grateful to have had uh, the support of uh, the Manitoba Arts Council, who uh, supported me tremendously throughout my, my early career. Uh, I think that really I could not have achieved uh, what I've been able to achieve in my career were it not for the support of organizations like the Manitoba Arts Council and the Canada Council. I think that there's a real, um, there's a real dedication to, um, to the arts uh, in Manitoba in particular, and, and it's, it's crucial. It, uh, certainly, I'm, I'm an example of someone that wouldn't be where I am if it weren't for that kind of support. Supporting the arts isn't simply about supporting artists who create a body of work, be it paintings, a dance series, a film, or a new novel. The documentation of our own arts legacy is an equally important endeavor. For the sake of dance in the world, since we have in this country and in this province the home to the first modern dance and the first ballet companies, it's our duty to 
truly make sure that we record our legacy in a very exciting manner, share it amongst ourselves, and then we must share it with the scholars of the world. And I can tell you there's tremendous interest in the legacy of dance from Manitoba. The absolute fundamental most important aspect of the arts is education. The Artists in the Schools program, founded in 1976, encourages an understanding and appreciation of the arts among Manitoba's students, the audience and artists of the future. This program places professional artists in schools to work directly with students and teachers. Participation in the arts through programs such as Artists in the Schools and Art Smarts helps young people develop self-confidence and collaborative and empathetic capacities and to achieve higher academic performance. Well, I'm going to say the arts are the vehicle by which um, we as teachers who have the responsibility to ignite the children's minds and, and uh, fuel their imagination and then illuminate that path of learning that it's only through the arts that we have that possibility because the arts are like a hundred languages and there's so many ways that um, children learn. The arts is the fuel for the uh, development of the total well-being of every person to reach their their human potential. With the arts you can have something of world importance that will come from the smallest of communities. Studies have shown that people who engage in the arts are better neighbors, better citizens, and are more tolerant. Arts and cultural activities are at the heart of communities. They can foster a sense of pride and shared accomplishment, and encourage cultural literacy and interaction with diverse populations. MAC has engaged northern and culturally specific communities for over 25 years. The Council celebrates artists and organizations who contribute a unique voice and artistic practice to Manitoba's rich cultural landscape. The first MAC grant that I got was the Aboriginal Arts Creative Development Grant and it would allow me to, to focus strictly on that project that I wanted to do. In my case, it was to produce um, a series of works that I could show um, as part of an art show that would be part of a, a traveling exhibition. Part of what I could give back was to talk a lot with the, with the youth and around the community, um, with different clubs as well as school, uh, on the importance of education and educating yourself and trying to break through the, the social kind of barriers that we have, especially up in the north, because a lot of them are isolated and do have a, a lack of resources available to them. You know, there are people on the way who, who do want to help you, but if you don't have the education and the confidence to go out and share your ideas, then they're not gonna, they're not gonna get that from you. When I started writing and, and publishing, there were as no French publishing houses in Manitoba. I had to go elsewhere to have my first books published. Um, but there was this personal determination that this is what I wanted to do. What the Manitoba Arts Council did, not only for the individual writer, through their grants, but through uh, grants awarded to publishing houses, made it possible for publishing houses to exist in Manitoba, to survive in Manitoba, and to concentrate on something that's very particular, uh, Manitoban writing. And in my case, even uh, in a sense, even more specific, Franco-Manitoban writing. In a minority situation, culture is essential because if you only have a language, if, for example, you only speak French, and you don't have a culture that's apparent around you, you don't really exist. You're, you're basically speaking a dead language. The arts can help people come together in a common understanding, often creating a sense of pride for one's community, be it cultural or geographical. Award-winning filmmaker Guy Madden created an international awareness of his hometown with the release of his ninth feature film, My Winnipeg. I, I wanted to make up for um a sad lack of, of Canadian self-mythologization and uh, I started doing it right off the bat. And I, 
I just think that Canadians, probably more than almost any other country in the world, su suppress our own mythology, and as a result, we haven't had much of an identity. And so much of what we know about our cultural history and everything has always been determined by a culture's artists. When you think of it going back to ancient Egyptian art and Greek vases and uh, everything, you know, art history is history. And uh, so um, it may seem odd to think of ourselves as living history, but um, we are. Art is essential practically to health. Participating in artistic exploration and discovery can help keep people healthy. Nigel Bart is the founder of Artbeat Studio, an organization that believes the arts and health are intrinsically related. I was diagnosed with schizophrenia 14 years ago, and um, I ended up going to my mom's, working in my mom's pottery studio, and finding that it really helped me recover. Um, and recovery is an ongoing um, process. One of the things I always say about art especially is that you can speak through your art and that sometimes people with mental illness are unable to express things that need to be expressed, either visually or, or in any capacity that art is, they can express themselves. So that's very important in healing. Like if you, if you can't express your story, then the healing doesn't take place. A small investment in arts and culture has huge benefits, not only for the well-being of the population, but also in terms of uh, economic development. For over 40 years, Mac has helped develop a thriving arts community in Manitoba. Today, with an annual operating budget of $9.5 million, MAC receives approximately 900 applications per year and awards 500 grants through the peer assessment process. Investments in the arts are quickly returned to the economy. Once funded, arts organizations immediately spend money on salaries and domestic goods and services to put programs into action. Just to mount one exhibition costs me personally around $15,000. Where does that $15,000 go to? It goes to the guy who's making the canvas. It goes to the shipping company. It goes to the paint company. It goes to the lumber yard. It goes to the carpenter who builds the stretchers. It goes to the brush company. And it's a lifetime of expenditure and investment in the community around me. The cultural industry is one of Canada's largest. It accounts for 600,000 jobs and contributes more than 7% to Canada's annual GDP. You finally finance a movie with or without the help of the government. The amount of employment, um, you know, that's money that's going straight into the economy plus secondary effects as well when that money is in turn spent within the community. Art and culture of all kinds is a huge economic booster. There's all kinds of spin-off uh, from the small because essentially that's what it is, the small grants that are, are given to individuals and organizations. I mean, we're talking about millions and, and millions of spin-offs in terms of dollars uh, in, in Manitoba alone. It's usually through art that a, a country's identity is, is confirmed. Art, whether it's, it's the kind of um, hermeticized art that we all just first think about, you know, when we think of abstract paintings hanging in a, in a gallery, uh, or whether it's the kind of art that just pops up that's, that's half art and half professional craft that pops up in commercials or rock videos or things like that. All that stuff adds up to defining us as a people. And there's uh, an almost immeasurable trickle-down effect. I think that the arts plays a very important role in society of inspiring people, of pushing them to, to think and to feel more than they normally would. The experimentation of art is like research and development that uh, someone might do in a lab or someone might do to develop a new product. With funding from Mac, it allows artists to experiment and maybe you know develop a, a, a new art form. The arts and culture are absolutely um, uh, evidence of our humanity. 
and for us to think it's something extra or that it's a frill or that it's something that uh, uh, we shouldn't support or that we as a society don't need. If we lose our art and we lose our culture, we lose our humanity.